Hello and welcome to this edition of Rethink India Masterclass. Uh, today we have a prolific principal with us uh, who believes that God leads our mind and ignites it with power of wisdom and truth. I think it is more than uh, the alchemist thing. Only yesterday uh, we were interviewing Professor P.B. Sharma, uh, uh, the founding vice chancellor of Rajiv Gandhi Pradyogiki Vishwavidyalaya, who uh, who uh, made a reference to Madame Curie's uh, uh, address in 1943, which was uh, uh, 25 years of commemoration of the discovery of radium, where Madame Curie herself emphasized upon uh, the scientific, the spiritual power of science. I think uh, uh, our today's maestro, uh, Madam Jyoti Arora, who leads uh, the Mount Abu Public School, uh, which is interestingly located in Delhi itself, uh, she, she resonates with that same ethos that God leads our mind and it ignites it with power of wisdom and truth. Uh, we welcome you, ma'am, uh, to this Reaching India Masterclass. Uh, and we are prepared to be your students for the next 35, 40 minutes and, uh, and have some uh, curious, curios, curious questions uh, about the prolific work which you are doing uh, at your school and uh, beyond that. Madam is also the National Commissioner Guides of Hindustan Scouts and Guides. Uh, she is a strong votary of uh, the precept of mentorship. And uh, she uh, is someone who backs very strongly uh, for the updation of facilitators. Uh, to faculty, she refers the term as facilitators. Uh, so ma'am, uh, the first curiosity is we have heard about Delhi public schools to be in different parts of the country. How come Mount Abu has come in the heat and dust of Delhi? Uh, just uh, to start with. Uh, Namaskar, everyone. Thank you very much for your kind words of introduction and uh, thank you very much Rethink for inviting me here, for having me here for this nice conversation. Uh, it's a very common question coming to me. So many people, they usually ask me how come the name of the school is Mount Abu uh, and they take it like either we have some connection with this uh, uh, headquarter of Brahma Kumaris, we have some connection of uh, this uh, spiritual uh, um, uh, field and then some usually also think that maybe we belong to Rajasthan and uh, it comes from there. So uh, uh, the simple sober answer to this question is the name of the school was named by the founder chairman Shirdian Aroraji and when I asked him the same question because it's a very common question as I said before coming to me he said okay Mount Abu has always fascinated me in terms of its purity, serenity, the culture this place carries and the, the rich values this place uh, carries with its name. So at the time of naming the school, I was with two or three of my management people and we were simply discussing about to name the school. And then I thought, okay, we, I, I ultimately want this school to be a center of spirituality emotions, purity, sincerity, serenity. So I thought, okay, what else could be a better name than Mount Abu? So the school was named as Mount Abu. And certainly we always try, strive to attain those heights. Though, though Mount Abu is not, if we have to look at the height, it's not, but it's so values, tradition and um, Culture. So that's the reason the school was named as Mount Abu. It's quite a daring and a daunting step uh, because uh, recognizing the spirit of Mount Abu, those serene hills, the values and ethos which they represent, and bringing them to the hustle and bustle of the national capital is quite a visionary step in the right direction. You know, ultimately, though, we look forward for uh, happiness, for peace, for satisfaction at the end of the day, wherever are we in the any of the corner of the world. So we look forward for that kind of satisfaction and happiness. And this uh, name uh, uh, is having that soothness, that calmness, uh, uh, that uh, peacefulness in its name. Mm -hmm. So even if we just name it twice, thrice, we feel like that we are in Mount Abu, that place where there is all happiness and peace around. Mm -hmm. It's really 
Ma'am, you you really resonate with Madam Curie's speech. We were just playing the video just yesterday. Uh, the sign, the spiritual power of science, which Madam Curie resonated way back in 1943, and uh, we were really astonished and really really elated uh, to read this uh, inspiring adage uh, in your profile, uh, where you acknowledge very boldly and very courageously uh, giving this power that our minds are. ignited uh, with wisdom and truth by a supreme power so so in this current scientificology where uh, we, we we try to generally refrain from uh, the spiritually throws in our educational ecosystem so how come this uh, is there a personal story or is this the entire uh, uh, i would say the educational ecosystem at your school uh, it reverberates with this uh, spirit Uh, first of all though i would like to uh, acknowledge the great contribution of madam curie with all my due respect and regards the way she had shown us the directions and now coming on to uh, resonance with the uh, uh, this uh, scientific uh, uh, approach and the spirituality one thing is very clear if you look at the motto of the school it says we trust in god the motto of my school is we trust in god and uh, the name itself has lots of spirituality in it so you know 3 4 years back when we were discussing a lot about the kind of indiscipline ha happening in the students the kind of aggression going up in in the uh, adults and uh, the way children have started behaving like adults and somehow they are losing on childhood and uh, we started talking very high about value education though value education had always been a subject in the school which i always advocate that value education can never be taught through a subject or in a class of 30 35 minutes this is something which has to be practiced so uh, when we were talking about how to bring those values how to integrate values to our curriculum so there was one simple ask, uh, answer to my understanding that we really need to connect our students uh, to values through spirituality because spirituality is the way forward to Uh, reach to the values you know we talk very high about we uh, let's do this activity this activity will have certain set of values and children will learn and understand value is one thing which has to be practiced and for that practice this way has to be there spirituality is one great aspect of our education which usually we um, misunderstand by some religion kind of teaching and all that spirituality has to do nothing with any particular vision religion so when it comes to spirituality it starts with meditating so we introduced uh, 10 minutes meditation as a compulsory period in our school our day begins with 10 minutes meditation through centralized mics everyone meditates and we invite teachers also those who are good at taking the children through this and then as this is one such activity which i have just taken it here so to my understanding if we really want to ignite the mind of children we are dealing with because we are dealing with different age group we have a child of 3 years also we have a child of 17 years old also so there is one common thing which really helps anyone any any person of any age mm -hmm. that is spirituality that gives you inner peace that gives you inner calmness that gives you a way to move forward that gives you more and more achievement because if you are with a peaceful mind if your thought process in a right direction if you are uh, having a positive frame of mind certainly you achieve a lot in your life so for that achievement i think spirituality is one one way day before only i was in a panel discussion when we were talking about integration of eq emotional quotient sq somebody uh, said sq means a social quotient i said i would like to add sq as a so, uh, spiritual quotient also because i really advocate a lot that spirituality should somehow be a part of our curriculum should be a part of our routine activities whatever we are doing in the school somehow we really need to connect because that will give our children a clear thought process what is right and what is wrong why not to go on this side and why do we need to adopt this direction so that is our role and responsibility as a teacher as an educator that we really need to want to show them the path and that cannot be done only through a simple lecture Mm -hmm. going to the class talking about this is right this is not right no i think we need to create platforms wherein they are connected 
and then they start understanding the importance of values in their life and ultimately that's our goal whatever we are doing as in as, as a system uh, as a school system we simply focus on uh, achieving uh, achieving through the best uh, platforms we we could create in the school and when it comes to achievement it's all together makes education and education is a process wherein we have to look into the development of the child in all aspects it's physical social emotional spiritual we have to take care of every aspect of the growth of the child invoking the inner compass i think this is a very human service uh, uh, madam uh, the school is doing under your stewardship uh, you also happen to uh, assume a very important position uh, in the regulatory aspect of india's uh, school education and uh, your views and your pronouncements probably uh, they shape up uh, a lot of policies and practices uh, being the member of result and examination committee is no small i would say responsibility because as you said accomplishment in the school years it is all about the academic accomplishment and you are at that uh, governing end so uh, how come these uh, i would say this philosophical precept which you have which you are professing at your school in what all ways it is expanded to the larger gamut of the central board of secondary education especially when it comes to results and examinations and accomplishments which are having a tremendous stress on the younger population uh, in this current era uh i was a part of the result and examination committee of cbse now i am the governing body member of uh, uh, central board of secondary education out of four elected principals uh, in the country so uh whether it is cbse or any other platform or my own school whenever it comes to a decision taking or policy making and this is something which i always say to my teachers as well that you always keep your own child in the center then you start thinking Mm -hmm. then you come out with the best of the best possible solutions best of the best benefits for the child because the entire system whether it is a school or number of schools or together a board like uh, the biggest board of the country central board of secondary education having more than 22000 schools but ultimately the child is in the center and the interest of the child should always be uh, the first and prime no, uh, prime most concern and priority so you just keep your own child into that first step and then you see what goes well because whatever we do there will be policies uh, by the policy makers and there will be certain stampings on those policies but i am very very simple in my thoughts and in my dealings whether it is my own school or whenever i represent schools in these uh, meetings of central board of secondary education the interest of the child should be the prime most concern and this is our responsibility not only professional responsibility this is our moral responsibility as well i don't know how many of us never wanted to be in this profession of education but there was something at the back there was supreme power who brought us here you know i appeared for my medical entrance examinations i appeared for so many other examinations but ultimately i chose teaching as my profession or a career because that love and passion which i carry for the children i could feel it at a very early stage that there is something which is forcing me to do more and more by looking at the children in my own vicinity i start thinking about so it it should always be child centered it should be always in the interest of the child and it should be very very simple i really don't want to complicate the things and i always believe in lots of positivity you enter into my school building you see a big size board it's very clearly written this is a positive zone please do not bring any negativity inside you are most welcome to enter but without you have to shed out all your negativity here we are open for any sort of discussions you want we we can have as many dialogues as you want but positivity is one such area where i focus a lot a lot a lot and that's the reason that my school is flooded with lots of community services programs only because getting my children connect with the community will certainly create that positivity and if we really want to minus this negativity around if we have to deal with the uncertainty then we have to create more and more positivity that is the only way there is no medicine made for this to uh, do away with the negativity 
the only medicine to do away with the negativity is having lots of positive thoughts in your mind all create all positive spaces around so it if sometimes it really becomes difficult when it comes to a decision taking policy making ultimately to uh, our government is the concerned authority to take all decisions mm -hmm. but i always uh, feel like being very very simple in my approach in taking all my uh, concerns forward in taking all my concern forward that this is what i simple thing because i am all the time surrounded by children mm -hmm. i can feel the the feeling of the children whether a child is 3 plus 5 plus 8 plus or 17 plus so we are the practitioners mm -hmm. when we are all the time within our children who else can understand them better than us so i simply put forward these these are my feelings and this is the uh, formula which i usually use whenever i have to take a decision with regard to my own school Oh, Ma'am, you, I think uh, we missed on that, but uh, this is a very, very influential position where you are representing the voice of 22,000 odd schools at the policy making level. So one governance question which just uh, uh, haunts us, strikes us, what is your personal thought about the balance between centralized regulation and uh, decentralized adoption and adaptation of the decrees which are made uh, from a centralized body. So how is this balance is being struck uh, at the Central uh, Board of Secondary Education where you are one of the uh, four members, uh, uh, one of the four member principles of this illustrious governing body because education is something which is very, very contextual. It is not just that the district magistrates have to comply with a kind of a regulatory, a law and order situation. Because you are nurturing the life, you are nurturing the next generation out there. So, how do you personally see to it? And what is the general trend at CBSE going on as of today? Uh, though it's a very, very sensitive kind of question, but uh, never mind. Uh, when it comes to CBSE, I have found this board the most child friendly board because I have been into the governing body of Central Board of Secondary Education. I have seen uh, the way the decisions are being taken, the child concern is always kept into mind with all positive things. And one common, uh, uh, one common, uh, what should I say, the, the feel which I have, whether it is a centralized thing or decentralized thing, that when it comes to a child, everyone has a very soft corner. Mm -hmm. Everyone deals with, uh, with the concerns of the child in a very, very, sensitive manner sensible manner so i don't think there is lots of fight there fight maybe with the system the schools are running but when it comes to the child everyone whether it is means the the person may be of holding any position of in any any sphere but uh, everybody feels concerned with the child and uh, the child uh, is always uh, kept in the mind and uh, uh, Central Board of Secondary Education is doing uh, a lot, a lot for the children. You know, in the last uh, seven, eight years, I have seen maybe 10 years because I have seen a tremendous change. The CBSE is working. It's getting more and more competency based uh, uh, education board because uh, previously the entire focus was majorly on content based learning. Mm -hmm. And when this CC was introduced, it was a very clear sign. It was a very clear indication that we do not want to produce children having just a bank of knowledge in their mind. That we really wanted to have children, those who are ready to compete the world. Now you think about the present situation wherein because of this uh, uh, crisis, the entire world is suffering and our world is going through very, very tough times. And there is lots of uh, uncertainty around. This is the high time then when we have to think a lot about our role in the education system because this crisis will have its ripple effects and we have to produce pro thinkers who, who are the, uh, the, the uh, students students we have to produce as pro thinkers those who are ready though first of all they understand the challenges coming ahead and they are ready, they know the solutions, okay, these are the challenges and these are the ways probably we can come out of all these problems. So our role lies there, creating lots of platforms for the children to learn and grow and then 
they should be all set to act according to the situation the education the meaning of actual education is preparing the child who can deal with all the circumstances the child who can face all the adversities coming uh, in life the problems coming ahead so that kind of uh, uh, discussion is always there in cbse that what can we do next what can we do next like uh, recently they introduced 21st century skills for mm-hmm. the children for the schools and um, uh, cbse is emphasizing a lot that uh, leaders should take it forward to their teachers and to the students because this is the uh, uh, need of the hour wherein we really need to address all these skills in our curriculum because ultimately we do not want a degree holder uh, student who is there in the society and having no uh, good place and we we are not even clear about the kind of jobs we will have over the period of 5 years or 10 years with too much intervention of this technology so we do not know where are we going to land up finally so our uh, responsibility whether it is a school or the board is to look into the current situation the current demands of education and then uh, moving ahead with those demands and cbsc is doing a fair well job mm-hmm. cbsc is understanding what kind of changes are being um, uh, brought in into the education system where is the mindset of the children what kind of teaching learning processes pedagogies are needed i think uh, it's moving in a very very right direction i think entirely for the benefit of the child even when ma'am said that it is all child centric uh, uh, governance at the core uh, it reassures oh, yes. us completely uh, because then everything falls in place when the when the centroid uh, is the child after all ma'am you you mentioned a very lovely concept and this is very rarely found uh, Uh, or or i would say very rarely uh, enunciated in such an expressive format you said that you uh, ask your teachers to treat the uh, their students as their own child so this parenting form of uh, treating your own students is is quite uh, i would say it's the it's the game changer it it changes everything empathy do comes in and you start taking care of it uh, i th- you also have a very uh, unique uh, trust and belief in the sincerity in the dedication and in the adaptability of the younger generation now this optimism is quite rare again i would say and uh, you, you you don't mince words when you say uh, all this and, uh, and then you also put up that what kind of an ecosystem is required to keep this younger generation enthused and elated and to remain sincere and dedicated and adapting to the newer practices of learning uh you you mention a, a very important point over there uh, uh giving focus attention is fine uh, you also talk about creating an inspiring atmosphere then you said a bit of extra care so what is this bit of extra care which uh, you feel makes all the difference in the learners uh again uh, it's a very common practice which i have been practicing in my school system for the last many many years because i'm a strong believer that whatever we want to get out of for our students or the system we have to create an environment for that just talking about that we want positivity around will not help we mm-hmm. have to create that kind of environment so i simply tell my teachers Okay, you pen down your requirements. What kind of requirements do you have from your classroom or from your students? Pen down your requirements, and then you create an environment. Are we meeting out? Is is my environment meeting out all those requirements? Then only you should look forward for output or results. Otherwise, no, because it's, we are dealing with twenty first century learners. They are more focused. They are more informative. They are more intelligent than us. many a times they come up with best of the solutions so those those are the gone years when we never used to uh, take their ideas or we used to involve them into all sort of discussions now i think i may have 20 good practices going on in my system but I, but i always make it a point that the student is always a part of that practice we always start with a dialogue and discussion with the student so that makes you uh, very positive in your approach that makes you very uh, because i understand everyone may have a different kind of perspective to handle the situation and we may have our own way of 
but when it comes to sincerity dedication passion all these things together positivity certainly leads to all best results again i would say that i take all these problems in a very very simple manner that's the reason i ask my teachers hey, had it been your own child what would you have been thought of finally you give me your answer who else can answer better than a mother so we we really need to be very simple in our approach approach rather complicating it too much so uh, these are the mantras for success and i always address these issues in my school that you give your best and rest you leave it up to the god and if you look at the vision of my school it says excellence um, passion for excellence at par urge for the uh, excellence at par so i always uh, emphasize a lot on three words urge there should be a strong urge to achieve more and more there should be passion and there should be excellence whatever you do and it's a very I, i take it with a very common example maybe my students i don't know how many times they have heard of it okay, even if you go to the kitchen to make a cup of tea you will have to ensure that you come back from the kitchen with the best cup of tea you have in your hands because you have to spend 10 minutes 15 minutes so this is why to waste those 10 15 minutes experience a lot your kitchen is a small laboratory sometimes you try with the ginger sometimes you try with this time time to just stating an example if there are so many opportunities available you grab all opportunities and opportunity should be grabbed at the right time it should not be like once you lose the train and then only you start thinking about it so you grab all best opportunity there is so much to learn about you know with this sudden lockdown uh, it was like what happened how will we continue how the classes will happen all that thankfully my teachers are quite techno savvy because we are uh, in partnership with the microsoft and our school has already been awarded as microsoft showcase school so i i said it's why not to turn students home into a small classroom why not to teach our mothers that they have to act as a teacher now onwards we don't know when will we go back to the school but why to discontinue this learning process we this is our responsibility great responsibility to see that we continue with the learning process of the child we cannot leave the child without having any learnings because lockdown doesn't mean uh, social distancing is already there uh, rather it should be called physical distancing no social distancing thanks to technology for connecting us so uh, i said hey, think about the child who is simply at home surrounded with four walls of the house what best opportunities we can create for the child to learn more and more so once you start thinking considering a student your own child i think you come up with best of the solutions in the world i have practiced this number of times whenever i am in my office it had it been my own daughter what how and uh, uh, how have i uh, uh, addressed this problem so um, uh, we we really need to uh, address that our children should be very positive in nature our should children should have passion for doing more and more they should have that uh, thirst for excellence that whatever they do that goes into the best of the records uh, then adaptability is one thing which is very important flexibility and adaptability i always emphasize a lot in my school system that children should be adaptive to different situations and kind of situations coming on the way you know this was all sudden uh, Uh, crisis and adaptability is the only thing which is helping us out a lot we adapted technology we adapted uh, turning our uh, kitchen into a uh, learning lab yeah. so all this uh, is very important i think you, you just realize that madam uh, is talking all about common solutions simple things but they are path breaking ones and uh, these are the fundamental these are the first principles you know i mean like when you are placing the child in the center of the education the process you were you were emanating deep empathy and concern for the end goal you already have the end goal right in place so it's like when we say the you know you, you start the reverse engineering so you are starting with the with the, with the goal already half it's already achieved i mean it's just a, it's just a journey which is there now 
this is remarkable and one more thing which Mark one more thing i would like to add here if you permit me that usually we don't create time for thinking we uh, talk a lot about reading skills writing skills listening skills we always consider four skills we never think about thinking skills where is the space to think if i give you 10 minutes with the solution with the peaceful time i can guarantee that you will come out with best of your solutions best of your solutions so when i uh, uh, started my journey with this school as head of the school it was like every day facing new kind of problems coming through the teachers ma'am this happened in the class ma'am this parent uh, is creating this kind of problem this and that and every day it was like taking out a solution and giving it to the teacher then i thought for oh, for how long can we continue like this every day means i was simply thinking there is a complete shift in my role instead of thinking like an educator i have started thinking like a lawyer what is right what is wrong this should be handled like this it should be handled like this so which i really did not like i i i simply decided and announced very clearly in my school every one of you is the leader of your own class you have certain powers you have certain liberties to deal with the situations number one it's not like there is only one person who will give you the all best solutions many a times you have better solutions than me number one number two you are most welcome to enter into my office with set of problems you have but every problem should have three probable solutions you come back to my office with three probable solutions i'll just take one because you are the practitioner you are dealing with the child you are dealing with the parent and who else can understand and decide better than you as a practitioner you come back to my office to be on the careful side let's have three probable solution and let me think one and there's a reason that i started one period simply as pure thinking period the children will only think you can give them a situation to think with the probable solutions don't criticize this is the right solution this is the wrong solution i don't invite those kind of uh, uh, discussions in the class just give them some space to think and come out with the best answers and certainly when we provide space for to children to think they they really think great and that adds into qualities and many a times i i will not hesitate in admitting that many a times i take my students help in taking out solutions to the problem sometimes i come across i will simply call five six students i will ask them to sit in front of me i will discuss the problem and i will i will invite their suggestions their comments can you uh, you please comment on this situation this is one alarming situation in the school what do you think could be the best probable solution so i think the involvement of students in the system involvement of parents and all stakeholders in the system makes it a complete system i think this is one of the finest examples of collaborative democratic decentralized governance and i think cbse should be really proud and privileged to have you as a member uh, of the of their governing body because uh, the officers uh, just pushing things down the line are uh, writ this god manifests in all of us and what madam is pulling out is like the way god just inspires each one of us individually Absolutely. the individuality is taken into account though within a system uh, it's not a chaos yeah. uh, this and i love very important point like we uh, put out our arms and emissions when we go into a certain office or something like that madam has put up a board giant board you leave your yeah. negative emotions over here <laughs> rather we feel fortunate to be associated with cbsc and cbsc has a pool of great leaders and that's the strength of cbsc ma'am the pleasure is always uh, both sides see at, at, practitioners like you you really add upon the value out there because otherwise such a regu giant regulatory body can go astray if people of uh, a different thought process if they just want to put in a single writ Uh, 32 lakh square kilometer of this country with different geo cultural locales they just cannot be governed by a single writ so there has to be a balance uh, out there and i think it's it's uh, it's nicely being i used. would i would simply praise the cbsc here for creating lots of opportunities for leaders like me to discuss to deliberate to experience and then come back with the solution the same we are role modeling in our own school system 
one just one last curiosity then one last question before we end this master class uh, for want of time are you also have a great uh, i would say penchant for more beyond teaching mentoring and counseling is something which you cherish a lot how would you please like to tell us more about this pedagogy of mentoring and counseling learners uh, and empowering them because you have a great belief in their innate potential which you have expressed very elaborately so how does mentoring and counseling uh, is unfolding at mount abu school and uh, what are your plans ahead uh that's a great component of the school education system you know without mentoring counseling guidance nothing can happen because uh, like i said before we have been dealing with different age group and they have their own kind of problems and uh, it's not just the child who is uh, facing a problem in the system it may be any employee of the school it may be any stakeholder so uh, that's the reason i think we are the first one in delhi to open up a counseling and guidance center in the school wherein i have uh, three dedicated counselors just to deal with the uh, emotional well-being of the children in the school mental well-being of the children of the school and along with this we also uh take their queries related to career and uh, professions as well so we have a dedicated center for this wherein we have experts and uh, you know with this sudden uh, announcement of break uh, lockdown it was immediately decided that this is the department who has to uh, start thinking immediately because there will be lots of concerns and over the period of these 3 main 3 uh, months of lockdown we are coming across so many uh, mental health and wellbeing issues and uh, uh, yesterday also i was sharing on a platform that when i was uh, talking to a very renowned psychiatrist and psychologist of the country i was shocked to hear that 1200 suicide happened during this lockdown only so it's a very alarming situation especially for educators like us who are dealing with the mindset of the children when they are uh, uh, socially not connected that much connected when their all activities have been put on hold so it, so it was decided that we will have trainings first of all all the members those who are associated with counseling and guidance center will have to undergo training then we had back to back trainings five six seven trainings just to train them what kind of situations may come forward and what should, what could be the probable solution then immediately we created a helpline number that was given to all the students in case of fear anxiety depression aggression you can call us any time this helpline will go 24 by 7 and then we started counseling our parents because parent make a uh, uh, parent are the major stakeholder you know and these days especially when they are acting as a parent and teacher both at home so mentoring happened for the parents counseling happened for the parents class wise and then we uh, we are very sensitive about uh, a number of students we have uh, with special needs okay we are very sensitive and and careful about dealing with their emotions what kind of emotions are they carrying so again a simple solution was uh, given to all the staff members that you should be in connect with these children you should have lots of discussions so that there is no vacuum created in any child it the, the child should not wait that after 15 days my teacher will connect me and then only i will express my feelings no make it as frequent as you can have lots of discussion have lots of conversation with your students ask them how are they feeling about so that they they express their feelings and there is no vacuum which creates a great damage later so this is what my this counseling and uh, uh, guidance department is doing and with regard to career also like i would go in batch of class 12 we keep updating them with all the latest information coming and we conduct we conducted so many orientation with our students those who were too much upset with this uh, all sudden announcement of uh, not having class 12 examinations so we have really done a lot especially in this lockdown period in addition to whatever we used to do in our routine just just a winding up uh, question again your prolific personality has also one of the badges one of the distinctions of being the national commissioner of hindustan scouts and guides so what it is all about and how this is scouting and guide culture uh, you are promoting uh, uh, you are leading 
you know scouting and guide is a very old concept in our uh, country and it carries legacy you know it talks a lot about inculcating discipline values and routine in our children but i feel very painful that the, we have over the period of time we have lost its glory we are not taking uh, scouts and guides concept in the in the country in a very serious way which which we should so that's the reason when i joined i started thinking oh first of all a booklet was created wherein all roles responsibilities and what kind of curriculum will we have what kind of expectations do we have what will be the learning outcomes of all these activities we are planning so this kind of uh, uh, manual you may say or guidance booklet was created just to start with creating that awareness that what, what is this concept all about and how can students be benefited with this concept and then we had back to back camps in my own school then i invited other schools also to Uh, have these kind of camps and these are really very beneficial because um um this concept is uh, quite old quite old maybe 50 years old now so, but it was started with a very pure feeling a very um, uh, very powerful feeling of making children cultured because when it comes to our own country we immediately think of this word culture we are Uh, we 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 are proud of our culture we are a heritage country we have lots of culture here unity and diversity itself uh, uh, is a, is a term to represent culture so that culture has to be maintained and culture will never go away in our uh, uh, history so just to maintain that legacy of that culture okay, what exactly is needed at school age and what exactly is needed one day Uh, they are out from the schools and then when they join uh, higher education so it's like catching them uh, young at age so if we inculcate all good values at this age when they are just 5 years 10 years then they continue because those uh, habits those uh, practices become habits and once it becomes habit then ultimately you you are a successful uh, person so um, the objective of hindustan scouts and guide is to maintain the culture and heritage of our country by inculcating all best values all best uh, uh, practices uh, in our children so that they grow go well so viewers here we had a prolific principal a mastro in it, in her own right madam jyoti arora sharing With her life experiences, her urge, passion, and excellence, the three-step process which she enunciated in this master class uh, uh, would be really helpful, a guiding beacon for all of us, and the most anchored in that spiritual foundation that God really leads our minds and ignites it with power of wisdom and truth. It is with this uh, deeper belief uh, she is really leading. not just the mount abu public school uh, based in delhi but she is also influencing the larger national policy and practices of education by being one of the most illustrious members of the governing board of central board of secondary education it was a real privilege to be your pupil for this uh, small duration ma'am uh, we are really thankful for you to you for taking out this time and illumining us with this vast array and the most uh, dominant takeaway lesson is when you when you feel the child at the center of education the extra care just flows on and on the innovation the decentralization even taking the students on board to solve their own problems this is really really heard of but you have really adopted it and last but not least the board keep your negative emotions over here park it over here and then enter this learning space this is space of inspiration with these uh, concluding words ma'am we take your leave Thanks a lot for joining us in this master class. It was really a terrific experience, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for your kind words again, and thank you very much for for having me here in the board, uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity to express my feelings. And uh, this is the time of crisis, and we all are praying for the safety of each other. And two great lessons what we have learned out of this crisis is having good connections. Connectivity is very important, and it should be the positive connectivity. 
the i think with that feeling only we are able to survive during this long lockdown period and value the nature which is very very important we have abused the nature a lot in the past this is the result of that so we really uh, we should really keep these two things in our mind that connectivity is very important and value the nature is also very very important with these words i would like to take a leave thank you very much yeah. thank you very much